I'm going to try to explain one thing or two about the rogue in Divine Divinity Original Sin. Since a few folks have problems with him, so and some have found out how to exploit him to the most. Well, let's start by customizing him. We will go into the abilities. I'll remove weapons. I'll never start with weapon skills. Don't need them. And skills, he'll need expert marksman and scoundrel. We are going to nasty deeds, no lock picking, no pickpocketing, but we will give him two in sneaking to start with. And I will, will explain why. You can actually wait, but this is for the demonstration purposes. I am going to make sure that he doesn't fail any of his dex checks by increasing dexterity to 8, speed and perception can, can be kept at 6. I'm then going to remove Razor's Edge, which is actually a good skill, but I don't need it at the moment. And I'm going to implement Tactical Retreat, which is a range of skill. Now, this is how we're basically going to start. As for talents, it will be Backstabber and Gorilla. As, uh, default chosen for the rogue. We're going to accept. As for Scarlet, I don't need to do anything about her, this is just a demonstration. So we will accept. Yes, and we will skip the intro. Now hopefully this should work. But we will see. Okay, now we're going to unlink, unlink them, and we're going to go ahead with our rogue. I have a mod installed, which makes him run faster. If that's cheating, then so be it. But it can be a, both a blessing and a curse uh, in regard to trolls. Well, we should come upon uh, the first baddies now, and there they are. Big bad man. He's going to summon some skeletons. Come on. Too afraid to take the fight, isn't he? He's going to let his minions do the work. And there they are. Well, so we've got our rogue here, not a lot of HP, but he does have some tricks up his sleeves. Now, remember this can be this cannot be used in every circumstance. Sometimes there are wandering monsters, and you need to be behind your enemy. So what what, you, what we're going to do is use tactical retreat to get behind this guy. Actually, we could have used. Walk in shadows. I just like tactical retreat better for this purpose. And there we go. Now we're behind him. And I gave him two in sneak, so I only had to use four action points to sneak. We sneak successfully, and they automatic automatically skip their turns. And now we have Gorilla and Backstab, and we should be hopefully with one go kill this guy. There you go. And sneak fails because I attacked, and I'm going to sneak again. Now I'm going to move right behind this guy, but I'm not going to attack him. Because, well, I only have three action points and I can't sneak again, so I'm just going to skip my turn. Now, he should die now. Bye bye. I've failed my sneak going behind this guy and now I can skip my turn sneak and so on but oh well let's sneak let's do this the way it's intended to uh, with sneak at five it only costs one action point to sneak again so you can actually sneak backstab sneak backstab sneak backstab a lot of times especially if you have glass cannon which is a talent now let's sneak let's in combat turn and let's go at this dude here. Bye bye. And that's how it's done. Remember, under certain circumstances, it can be done. 
because of AoE effects and uh, wandering enemies and so on. But if you can get behind a caster, either using tactical retreat or simple walk in shadows and get behind the caster, go to sneak mode and get your party to attack. Now, so every, from the other side, so everybody's facing them. The enemies are facing your party. Then you should have an easy fight because he can just he can take out the caster first and move to the next guy from behind. Well, and this was this were actually the basics. So thanks all for, folks for watching, and have a nice day.